Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the Canadian North, and specifically to Missinibe Lake Provincial Park in northern Ontario. The topography of this area consists of rolling forested lowlands under 1,500 feet in elevation. The land has been shaped by eons of glacial activity grinding the mountains down into rounded hills with valleys filled with till, or soil derived from ground rock. The trees of this area range from dense stands of jack pine, white birch, and poplar scattered throughout pine forests. The waters here are extremely productive for fishermen. Common animals of the area include white-tailed deer, moose, and possibly woodland caribou, and a few elk. The predators of this area include lynx, wolves, and black bear. Jacqueline Perry and Mark Jordan were both about 30 years old and were marking their fourth anniversary by spending two weeks kayaking in the provincial park. They would kayak through their day and find a camping spot to lay out their tents and bedrolls to spend romantic night after night under the stars together. Jacqueline was born in St. Louis, Missouri and was a practicing family doctor at Grandview Medical Center in Cambridge, Ontario. Mark was a software developer and a scout leader who enjoyed relaying his knowledge of the outdoors to the next generation. Both were very much in love with each other. They were avid outdoors fanatics and spent a lot of their free time outside together whenever they had the chance. As they kayaked along the lakeshore on September 6, 2005, they arrived at the campground they were planning on spending the night. They paddled up to the shore and disembarked their two-person kayak with their camping gear. The couple had spent a lot of time meticulously planning their excursion and set up their impromptu kitchen to make their dinner for the evening. In all of their planning, they did not choose to bring a firearm nor bear spray. They didn't even bring a large knife as a weapon, as they had never had a problem with any animals during their adventures. As the savory scent of their meal wafted through the brush and foliage of the area, the couple was unaware that an uninvited dinner guest was planning on a very tragic visit with them soon. As the couple was cooking their meal, there began a rustling in the bushes behind them. As they glanced toward the noise, a small and thin black bear emerged from the brush with its head low. It slowly began walking toward the couple and angled toward Jacqueline. The couple yelled at the bear, hoping to scare it away. Mark was under the impression that if you are confronted by an aggressive bear in the backcountry, you simply need to assert yourself and impress upon the bear that you are in charge. But his misunderstanding of what exactly motivated the bear was a dramatic misconception of the danger that it presented to them. The bear slowly continued forward toward the couple as Mark yelled and confronted the bear. Before Mark could effectively drive the bear off, it quickly pulled Jacqueline to the ground and began biting and clawing her. It was tossing its head back and forth as it bit her and tore her flesh. It clawed her neck and head severely as it bit her. They began dragging her from the campground and into the nearby bushes. Mark wrapped his arm around the bear's neck and began punching it. It was then that the bear released Jacqueline and began to focus its attack on Mark. As the bear wrestled with Mark, he used his Swiss army knife to stab the bear, but the bear did much more damage to him than the other way around. The bear swatted and bit Mark several times, causing gashes and cuts to his arms and hands. He had slash wounds from its claws over other parts of his body as well, but continued to fight for his and his wife's life. After what seemed like hours, but was only a few minutes, the bear backed off. The wounds inflicted by Mark's knife were not fatal, but served as a deterrent to make the bear reconsider its plan of attack on the couple. Mark took this opportunity to scoop up his wife and carry her toward the shore. He laid her down in the kayak and pushed off from the shore to get away. He knew, judging by her injuries, that he had to get her medical assistance immediately or she may die. He paddled strenuously as he knew they had several miles to go before the possibility of finding anyone who could help. As Mark paddled, Jacqueline struggled to maintain consciousness. He was concerned she might fall overboard and would pull her closer to him to make sure she didn't. He yelled for help from the shore as he paddled through the inky night for the better part of a mile. His cries for help were heard by a father and son camping along the shore for the night. They were visiting from Pennsylvania and directed Mark to their boat. The men moved Jacqueline aboard the larger vessel and then headed out toward the park office when they came across another boat. 
In this vessel, a doctor from North Carolina and an off-duty police officer welcomed the injured couple and began triaging their injuries with first aid as the boat was piloted further along the route toward the park office. The boat trip was about 10 miles, but traveling by boat is much different than traveling by car. It takes more time and is dependent upon the conditions on the water and any currents that may be in it. During the trip, Jacqueline passed away from blood loss from her injuries from the bear attack. After arriving at the park office, Mark was rushed to Sudbury Medical Center and was stabilized. He underwent surgery and received 300 stitches to close the wounds the bear attack had inflicted. Authorities ordered the park to be cleared of all visitors as they searched for the wounded bear beginning on September 6th. At around 8 a.m. on Saturday, September 10th, Ministry of Natural Resources officers tracked the bear down and killed it. They'd been on its trail for a while and their persistence finally paid off. It had a knife wound to its neck that was inflicted by Mark during his attempt to drive it off from his wife. The bear's carcass was sent to the MNR Research Laboratory for analysis. It was found to be a male black bear that was nearly grown, but very thin and probably in a state of starvation. The attack probably occurred due to the poor health of the bear, who was facing hibernation with nowhere near the body weight it would take to survive the winter. The investigators continued to process the attack scene to gather more evidence. Mark was awarded the Star of Courage from then-Governor General Michael Jean. He suffered mental anguish from the death of his wife, feeling like he should have done more to stop the attack. He is quoted as saying, If you have the ability to walk up to a bear, put your arm around its neck, and put it into a headlock and bludgeon it a bit, I could have easily used my knife to literally slit its throat. I expected to be able to just scare it off. He continues with, My understanding of aggressive bears at the time was you just had to scare them, show them who's the boss. It is easy to second-guess yourself in a situation like this, but everyone's first survival instinct is to flee for safety, or at least seek it in a relative degree. Mark's propensity to ascribe the traits of failure or timidity is common, but is not a realistic perspective under circumstances of extreme duress, like a bear attack always is. Tell me what you think about Mark's response to the attack on himself and his wife. Do you think his response was appropriate, or was he too reluctant? If you found yourself in a similar situation, how do you think you would respond? Do you think you would be as brave as Mark was during a similar situation? Please post your comments below in the comment section, and let's talk about it. Mark retells the story of the attack at special events periodically, only leaving out his wife's last words to him. His friends and family hesitate to discuss the event with him for fear of drawing his attention back to such a tragic and traumatic memory. Keith Scott, who is a bear expert with the Ministry of Natural Resources, states that these kinds of attacks are very rare. He cites that there have only been four fatal bear attacks in all of Ontario dating back to 1978. He also states that this attack was predatory in nature and that bears have learned to, and often do, prey on humans. Jacqueline became the first person to be killed by a bear in Ontario in 13 years. Although fatal bear attacks are uncommon here, bear confrontations are not as rare. In early September of the same year, a black bear killed a man, and one week later, another man fended off an attack. In the province of Alberta, there were four grizzly bear attacks, with one leading to a fatality of a female jogger, which we will cover in a later episode. In British Columbia, another woman was mauled in May of the same year. Shout out to J.P. Couric for requesting we discuss this episode. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness and is fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop for Christmas presents. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.